I don't think the money is that useful early on. I think it's actually kind of harmful unless you absolutely positively need it. But I think the less you have, the better off you are initially. My general feeling though is that is that independence is often an overlooked value. And I think it's, it's particularly important to us and I think should be more considered for others. I think a lot of folks these days just want to get in bed with someone who has a lot of money to build their business. And they don't think about what are they giving up when they take something in. And you do give up something. You give up autonomy. You give up a time frame. For example, when, when someone gives you money, you're kind of on their time frame now. Um, the, the aim is to, is to return on that money, understandably so. And there's usually a time frame in which that return is expected. Um, versus like just going out and building the best thing you can and saying, I want to be in business for 20 years, 30 years. It doesn't, it's not always consistent with um, raising money, understandably so, again. So just understanding what you're giving up when you take something in, I think is a very good thing. And I don't think accelerators really imbue people with that, uh, with that question. They, they, they don't encourage people to ask that question. Uh, they just encourage people to go fast. And when you're going fast, you tend to hire a bunch of people and spend a bunch of money. And I think that the term accelerator in itself is a bit of a problem. Um, but I do think there's, there's some wonderful things that come out of it. I know a lot of people who've gone through them who've really enjoyed it. So uh, do you angel invest in startups? Not really. I put a few, bu few bucks into a few companies, primarily run by people that I know. So it's usually to help a friend or a founder that I'm really familiar with. But in general, I don't. I have enough risk in my own business. Uh, and then I invest in public markets, but in a very conservative way. Um, so like all the risk in my life is tied up to my own business. I don't really like to give money out to other risky businesses. Um, unless, again, it's someone I know and I want to support them. So what makes you crazy in a, a typical day in work life? <laughs> what makes me crazy? <laughs> yes. Um, also personal life, maybe. Yeah, well, per I've got two young kids and, and they make me crazy. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work. I don't have a lot of free time. I, I, I've always savored my free time and my independence, and I don't have a lot of that right now. So it's hard for me to adapt to that. Frankly, that's one of the biggest challenges in my life is to like realize that I'm not on my own schedule anymore when it comes to, to, to life. Um, at work, I, things don't really drive me crazy other than like inefficiency and, and, um, having to repeat myself. I, I don't like having to say the same thing two or three times to a team that I'm working with. Of course, like out loud, I will say things many times because not everybody hears you. You know, I might do this podcast and you have your audience. Someone else has their audience and they're different audiences. So I'll say the same thing in a sense, but I don't like saying the same thing to my team over and over. So that's one of the things that frustrates me. And when I see things becoming more complicated than they need to be, or more convoluted, or, or in my mind, thicker than they need to be, I don't like that. So that's the kind of thing that really doesn't really drive me crazy so much, but it's the things I don't like about work. And um, yeah, I would say those are, the, those are the things. I mean, when you are stressful like these times, what do you do to overcome these hurdles? Well, it's, it's different. I think you got to figure out where it's coming from. So sometimes is it my problem? Like, am I, am I driving people in the wrong direction? Am I creating the complexity? If so, like there's one solution for that. If another, someone else is doing it, there's another solution for that. Um, in, in my life, like at home, I, I don't have a lot of control over how my kids are going to be and the things that are going to drive my, me and my wife crazy over this or over that. So part of this is recognizing what you don't have control over. I think that's the number one thing, because if you try to control something you don't have control over, it'll drive you more crazy. So it's more at the fundamental level. That's where I have to really spend my time. Otherwise, I can I can get myself wound up in loops that I don't have any control over. But I think I do. And then you just keep going in circles. So, hey, look, if it's if it's something I can't handle or I don't have control over, the best thing for me is to step back and let it happen actually, and let it pass. But if there is something I can have influence over or I'm involved with specifically, I think about what can I do to change the situation? And, and, and is it within my grasp? Is it within my reach? Is it within my, my power to do so? If so, like, how can I do this productively and constructively? Um, so like yelling, for example, is not a particularly good, <laughs> good approach. Um, sometimes perhaps you may have to be firmer with something, but that's not always the go-to. So it really is contextual. I'm not a big fan of, of consistency. I'm more a fan of con context. 
And so I think context control, those kinds of things are really good things to think about if you really want to want to make change. How do you protect your focus, attention, and time against these interruptions, by the way? Um, well, I'll say like technically, I don't have notifications on for pretty much anything. Um, I don't have, I turn whenever I can, I turn like the badges off on my dock, on my, on my phone, I turn notifications off. So I don't like to be pulled into things. Um, and even though these things are called push notifications, they're not, they're pull. They pull you into a device or they pull you into a situation. I prefer to keep them all off and I'll check things when I have time. If someone needs to really get a hold of me, if there's an emergency, they can call me. That's a different kind of thing. So I, I tend to use voice and audio as like the emergency channel. Otherwise, I'll just get back to people when I have a chance. So that's, that's number one. Um, number two is not expecting that of other people, not expecting immediate responses from others, um, not jumping in and causing chaos and havoc, respecting other people's boundaries like I want them to respect mine. And if you do th those things, like you keep notifications to, to a minimum and you don't bug other people that much and so they won't bug you, those two things can go a long way towards, towards maintaining a, uh, an environment where you can focus just on the things you need to and not get carried away and getting pulled into to, you know, the maelstrom of, of work. Um, so uh, that, that's, those are the two things I do. Um, the other thing I would say is not having that much to do is very important. So people like to make, them, make long lists for themselves and have all these expectations and goals and rituals. I'm not that person. I don't really have a lot of goals. Um, I don't have a lot of expectations as well. I, I, I tend to focus on the now focus on what we're doing, try to do the best job I can. And that's, that's, you know, let the chips fall where they may versus like setting up these goals and these numbers and these things we're all trying to attain and strive towards. I think that causes a lot of stress and unnecessary chaos. So um, dialing things back, just saying, let's do the best work we can today. Let's give it our best today. And that's all we have. So sticking close to that, I think is very helpful. So do you consider yourself more as an introvert or an extrovert? I'm very introverted, for sure. But, yeah. I mean, it seems to be, vice, I mean, uh, reverse, uh, as we listen <laughs> and uh, probably read your books, and you are very confident and also outward. Well, I mean, books are very introverted things. I get to write them in quiet, peace and quiet, and I get to put them out there and people can read them and they're not, I'm not with them, you know? So uh, I like conversation. I like one-on-one -on -one conversations, small group conversations quite a bit. And to me, the internet's interesting because it's, it's, even though you might be broadcasting to many, many people, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, a million, whatever it might be, it doesn't feel that way to me. It feels like I'm having a conversation with one person and I'm very comfortable in those situations. And I'm also comfortable on stage. I've spoken to big audiences, but that also feels in, in a way um, fine. What I don't like is after my talk, there being a line of 30 people to have to talk to or have to do like the after talk dinner, like that kind of stuff I, I'm not comfortable with. Um, so it's really like the, the big groups where it's one to many or, or me broadcasting one to many this way that I'm comfortable or one on one, but I don't like the middle ground. So I would definitely mm -hmm. call myself an introvert and I prefer to stay home versus go out to a party or whatever. That's just not kind of my thing. So when do you find yourself in the state of flow? Um, flow, right when I write, uh, I, I find myself in flow when I'm thinking about new product ideas. Uh, so big picture thinking, I, I find very relaxing and very comfortable, comforting and, and intellectually stimulating and interesting. Um, I don't find myself in the flow when I'm in the minutia, when I'm dealing with a bunch of stuff I don't want to deal with. I, I definitely feel clunky and not flowing so for me like for example we're about to work start working on a new product uh this week i like this this is kind of my zone um the big picture of thinking about what this thing should do what it's all about uh the big idea behind it coming coming up with a clear idea that i can uh explain to others um finding an idea that in my mind rhymes like it all just sort of rhymes it goes well together like a like a good poem that is where i'm in my flow state